I'd like to thank Simply Safe for sponsoring today's episode. More on them later. Welcome to the pop-up cabin, which I designed to be built in a single day. This was made possible by the slots we pre-cut into the boards, which allowed us to fit the cabin walls together within mere minutes. We then used a chainsaw to cut the openings, and the fold-out rafters were a cinch to place over the ridge pole. After tarping the roof structure, we were set for the night. Not only was the pop-up cabin easy and cost-effective to construct, but its materials are lightweight, making it easy to transport, especially in areas where conventional vehicles are unable to venture. This makes it ideal for backcountry expeditions, where semi-permanent shelter is often needed sooner rather than later, along with the option to break it down just as quickly and move it to another staging point, possibly while blazing a trap line, establishing a surveyor's outpost, hunt camp, fishing shanty, or checkpoint shelter on a wilderness trail. On the lighter side of things, it could also make for a fun backyard project to do with the kids. When constructing the pop-up cabin, I did my best to show everything as clearly as possible so that people could observe how it was done and therefore be able to replicate and modify it for themselves. That being said, I have received many requests from people who would still like to purchase an actual set of plans for the cabin. So if you're interested in those plans, I'm currently working on getting them together and I hope to have them available online within the next month, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, my plan for the day, after having breakfast, was to build a set of bunks for the cabin. In lieu of lumber, I hit the trail in search of deadwood cedar to construct the bunk out of.
Later that day, I met up with my dad at the sawmill, where we processed the cedar I had gathered earlier. Finally, it was off to the cabin with our rough cut pieces. Before I began work on the bunk, I decided to take a few minutes to outfit my little cabin with some sensors. Now I'm sure you're wondering at this point why a simple backwoods cabin would need this kind of technology. Well, it all started several years ago when we discovered that someone had been stealing large amounts of firewood from my grandfather. Considering that he used the firewood to heat his home during the winter months, we were quite upset that it had been taken. Skipping ahead to early last year, I was introduced to Simply Safe a security system that is known for being incredibly effective and reliable. I ended up telling the Simply Safe team about the problems my grandfather had been having, and they agreed to help by sending us their security system. Now, although Simply Safe is intended for home use, I was able to use elements of the system to protect my grandfather's woodshed from further theft. In addition, we also posted no trespassing signs around the shed, set up trail cams, and installed a gate at the main entrance. Well, I'm happy to say that we haven't had any problems since. Anyway, almost a year later today, Simply Safe is sponsoring us once again, which is why I decided to use my little pop-up cabin to highlight some of the incredible features that their security system has. First of all, this is the home base, which is the brains of the security system. The great news is that it is equipped for worst case scenarios, meaning that it will still work if you lose power, Wi-Fi, or the system is attacked. These are all the different types of sensors that the system comes with. As you can clearly see, Simply Safe is modern comprehensive, meaning that it is capable of protecting your home inside and out. Although the system comes with many sensors, I found them easy to install and intuitive to use. Entry sensor. Detected. Now choose a name. Entry sensor. Named. Simply Safe protects like a pro. Its 24-7 professional monitoring service means faster police response times. Three and a half times faster to be exact. That's because Simply Safe security specialists can provide real eyewitness evidence to the police department. They can also let the police know if an intruder is in the house, what they are doing, and if they have a weapon. This information allows the police to do their job quicker and more effectively, keeping your home safe. Experts choose Simply Safe, which is why The Verge, PC Mag, and CNET have all recommended the system, not to mention the 3 million people who use Simply Safe every day. Finally, the Simply Safe lock makes your home more secure by ensuring it's always locked. The majority of break ins happen through unlocked entry points. Please exit now. Which is why the Smart Lock makes sure your door is locked even when you forget to lock it. Keep track of who comes and goes. You'll get alerts when anyone locks or unlocks your door, so that you know when the kids come home from school or the contractors leave for the day. Grant access from anywhere to guests and visitors by unlocking and locking your door from anywhere in the world. 
the best part of all is that Simply Safe's prices are fair and honest at 50 cents a day with no contracts. Please visit simplysafe.com slash the outsider to learn more. Now let's get started on that bunk. <clears throat> Just have to guess on it here. Thanks. Well, the day's just about over and the bunks are now built. Uh, I probably mentioned it before earlier on in the episode, but we used some deadwood uh, from some smaller cedars. 
uh, which we took to the sawmill and just roughly cut on a couple sides and we threw it together. So it's, uh, it's looking really good. I'm actually really happy with it and I like the folksy uh, kind of rough and ready look that it has. It's perfect for inside here. When we made these bunks, we knew that we were making it in a pretty tight space. Uh, so we made the top bunk uh, able to flip up. And so uh, we can sit on the bottom bunk and use it as a seat during the day. And then at nighttime, the top can flip down. Uh, if there's one of us staying here, um, we can sleep on the bottom bunk and throw all of our gear on top. Or if there's two of us, then one on the bottom, one on the top. We built this cabin to be just big enough for two people uh, to stay out here. Uh, so there's a couple seats that we have in here and there's just enough room for the bunk and the stove and that's about it. But it's the, really the perfect size. You'll probably have noticed that the wood stove we have in here is just way too big. But this is just what I had on hand and so we're making use of it. But uh, I'm actually happy with the size of it because what we do is we, uh, we make a fire and we don't make it too big. And as soon as the fire gets established inside, uh, we close the door, we turn the damper right down, um, and so it smolders away slowly. So it's not making a lot of heat the way that we, we burn wood inside of it. Uh, it's such a heavy stove that the metal absorbs a lot of the heat, and even once the fire goes out, it slowly radiates that heat over a longer period of time. Uh, initially, I was going to put a uh, just a tent stove inside here, which would be um, more appropriate for the size. But as soon as the fire goes out in the tent stove, uh, the heat would have left from here fairly quickly, especially with a tarp uh, that's covering the roof at the moment. Now, as far as the tarp is concerned, it's only a temporary measure. Uh, we, we did it so that it was lightweight, easy to bring out with our supplies. And uh, that was a large part in why we could assemble this cabin in a single day. But now that the cabin is established, uh, we can replace the tarp with something a little more heavy duty, but uh, it was just easier to uh, take a folded up tarp out with us and uh, throw it over before nightfall came uh, and it, it enabled us to finish the cabin much quicker. I've also been getting a lot of questions about the base that this cabin is built on. Uh, and again, we wanted to build it as quickly as we could so that we could have uh, an outpost established here. Um, but what we did is we, we laid three cedar logs down, we leveled them as best we could, and we built up from there. Uh, and so once spring comes and the thaw begins, uh, this cabin will begin to shift and sag. Uh, but by then we will actually have uh, disassembled this cabin and moved it elsewhere. Uh, so when summer comes, uh, we can actually put it on proper footings, whether that's penny pavers or stones or something that's a little more uh, solid. So we really just built it so that we could uh, be here quickly and, uh, and move in and be quite comfortable. Anyway, this is the second episode of my pop-up cabin series. Uh, I plan to do more with this cabin as, as we continue on in future episodes, uh, so stay tuned for that. When I put out the very first episode for this series, I was overwhelmed with the amount of interest that this cabin, uh, this design has received. And uh, I knew that it would be uh, interesting to some people uh, because it's quickly deployed, it's uh, easy to transport, it's cost effective. Uh, it's just a kind of a new twist on uh, the cabin, but it's maybe more attainable for a lot of people who would like a cabin but just maybe can't afford it or don't have the land or whatever. Uh, this is something that can be assembled uh, fairly easily and it can, it can even be put together in uh, someone's backyard if they just kind of want a, a little getaway cabin a little retreat for themselves. So there's many applications for this and uh, obviously it's garnered a lot of interest, uh, which is awesome to see. Anyway, my dad and I just made coffee, so we're gonna uh, sit here and enjoy it. And I'm gonna have mine before it gets cold. Uh, but thanks again for watching, I really appreciate it. And I just love seeing uh, people talking about this design and getting excited about it with me. And I'm excited to develop this design even further in future episodes. Until next time, my friends.